nighttime in the village. It was as quiet as could be. The only sound was the wind rustling the stars. Everyone slept. Everyone but one man. He stood by his window overlooking the town, waiting and listening. Listening for the sound of someone dreaming. Safe in her house, Sarah was asleep and dreaming. She dreamt that she flew on a bird whose feathers sparkled with moonlight. Suddenly, the dream stopped. The man at the dark edge of town rubbed his hands and smiled. Dream one. In the bed next to Sarah's, Tony was asleep and dreaming. Then Tony's dream stopped. Dream number two. Joe McGee, the grocer, lost his deep sea dream. Three. Rose McGee, the artist, lost her dream painting. Four. All the villagers were losing their dream. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine! Enough for tonight! <laughs> night after night, the people awoke with a start as their dreams disappeared. They couldn't sleep, they couldn't work, they were too tired to play. It felt like it was raining all the time. When the man saw that he was overstocked with boxes of dreams, he decided it was time to open for business. Do you want some dreams, my friends? Come and buy my dream. Come and buy my dreams. Hey, Tony, look. Hey, Rose, is this for real or am I dreaming? A flashy sign in the middle of the night. Supermarket now open. Dreams for sale, bargain prices. Nightmares cheap. Dreams for sale. Just what we've been missing. Let's go see. Wait for me, Sarah. Dream supermarket. What will they think of next? Hurry. Come on. Welcome to our customers. Welcome. I don't want to go in. Come on. Don't be scared. We need dreams. Welcome. Wow, look over there. Dreams of finding sea dragons in your bathtub, reduced to four dollars. Dreams of soft nights in scented cities by the sea, only ten dollars. Hand me one short dream for my afternoon nap. Give me uh, two dreams of chocolate sundaes. Can we afford any dreams, Sarah? Only a few short ones, I think. Got some terrific specials for kids, you know. Pirate ships. Hippopotamus rides. The biggest bubblegum bubble. But Sarah wasn't listening. From a box nearby came the call of a bird. <gasps> My dream bird. Look at her go. Oh, that's great. Look at Sarah. Look at her go. Stop that girl. She has stolen a very expensive dream. I haven't stolen this bird. It's mine. I dreamed it. You must have taken it from me. 
Something's fishy. Definitely suspicious. This label looks familiar. My tunnel dream! You stole it! You stole my dream! Which box has my dreams, you robber? Uh, let's pull open all the boxes and find out for ourselves. No, no, don't, don't you dare! But it was too late. The dreams flowed from the boxes and danced through the room. Everyone was relieved. They had recovered their dreams. Come, Tony. We can go home now. Am I ever tired? <sighs> we'll be good to get back in bed. No, you can't leave my house without paying me. I own all those dreams. I own all those dreams. Dreams began to fade. Sarah was clinging desperately to her dream. I won't let you go. Then all at once she knew what to do. People, hold on tight to your dreams. They are your dreams. We'll let the mean man have our nightmares. Take our dreams and go home to bed. The people began to drift off toward their homes. Sarah and Tony lingered for a moment. Sarah, what will happen to the mean man? Look in the corner. The man moaned in his sleep, haunted by dreams of horror and destruction. Don't look anymore. Those nightmares are awful. Is he ever going to wake up? Yeah, I suppose. Once all the meanness has been dreamed out of him. And they flew out of the house to follow the people with their dreams back to the village and back into bed. <laughs> 